Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ron Perea. We are now at the location of what happened 50 years ago, part two of our series of the Albuquerque riots. And as you recall, one year before this event, at UNM campus, it was an anti-Vietnam War riot. And so you must see that, it's right before this one, enjoy it. In June 1971, the Hispanic riots occurred against the Albuquerque Police Department. On this spot is where they actually turned over a police car threw in a bottle of gasoline and molotoved it, and it burned right here on the spot. The folks that lived across the street witnessed the entire event. June 1971, 50 year old oak trees populate the hills of Roosevelt Park. Its grass is covered with picnic blankets and coolers. Fathers throw balls to their sons. Mothers with girls lay out goodies from their blankets. Paulo pulls up in his Thunderbird and parks under a tree. From the north side of the park, he can hear the disturbing roars of a growing crowd. As they speed out from the campus less than a mile away, anti-war protesters carry placards onto the park. A knot grows in Paulo's gut when he can see the approaching rabble. He trots across the street and anxiously rings the doorbell. Hurry, answer the damn thing, he tells himself. A petite brunette finally appears. Hurry, hurry, let's get out of here, he says. What well, happened to hello, sweetheart? Paulo opens the screen door himself, kissing her cheek. Hello, sweetheart. He pulls her hand. Let's get out of here now, he says, pointing to the forthcoming disturbance. Hold your horses, big guy. Let me get my keys and stuff. Reluctantly, Paulo enters his fiancée's house. We got to get out of here, baby, he insists. Cops are closing in. It doesn't look good. I have to change my shows and find my keys. Paula rolls his eyes. We gotta go. He watches her throw clothes around in her bedroom. She says, I'm looking forward to the ball game. The Dukes are in town for ten games, you know. Nikki, I wish we had time to catch more games. Unsuspecting, she says, if your ROTC obligations didn't take you away so much, we could, you know. Well, you know, I... Well... How I feel about the military. Activity from across the street pulls Paulo's view through the front window to the park. He can see picnicking families scampering away, some leaving their food behind. He steps outside where hordes of protesters are taking over the park. He shouts, Nicky, let's move now. Hold your horses. We're not going to have any horses to hold if we don't move now. The cops are almost here. Paula goes back inside. Nikki is putting keys in her purse. He pulls her outside. While she locks the deadbolt, Paulo sees squad cars with lights flashing circle the park. Sudden explosions of tear gas spread across the grass. Two protesters toss canisters back at the cops. Oh, my God, Paulo, get us out of here, Nicky cries. I think we should stay here behind your walls. Just get me out of here. They dash across the street to his car. He fumbles with the keys before opening the locked door. As he turns around, a panicked man with a boy runs into him. They all tumble onto the pavement. The father drags his crying son away. Nikki leaves the car to help her fiancé and is knocked down to the ground. A sweaty, long-haired dude wearing a Make Love Not War t-shirt is on the ground next to her when a tear gas canister lands nearby. 
Climbing to his feet, the dude tosses it back at the approaching line of police cars before running away. Nicky is slow to stand. A moment goes by before blood-nosed Paulo helps her up and pushes her into the T-Bird. Nearly breaking the key in the ignition, he pulls the steering wheel sharply left on only to brake in the screeching stop. A sedan with lights flashing blocks him. A cop in full ride gear exits. Out of the car, he orders. Paulo does what he is told. Nicky doesn't move. Paulo looks in the car and sees she is having difficulty breathing. The riot cop orders Nicky, Get out of the car, now! Officer, she can't. Can't you see she's hurt? Paulo runs around to the car to help her. The cop is diverted by the squawking walkie-talkie. It causes him to notice several rioters on the other side of the park running toward an overturned police unit. He grinds his teeth as a rioter stuffs a rag into the gas tank and lights it. Within seconds, the unit explodes into flame. After pulling out his baton, he sees the guy in front of him tending to a female in the car and takes out his helplessness by swinging the baton across the guy's back. Knocked to the pavement by lightning bolts of pain, Paulo looks up to see the cop dragging Niggy out onto the street where he takes a swing at her with his baton. Smoke blows across their path. The police officer coughs. When I tell you to move, lady, you move. He takes off on foot toward the park. Paulo spits up tear gas. He tries to stand, but the world spins and he falls to the asphalt. He hears Nicky moaning. With his head spinning, all he can do is crawl toward her. From below the car, he sees more smoke rolling over the grass and pulls himself up to the car's door. As the world settles some, he sweeps Nikki into his arms. Her mouth is bleeding. Oh, baby. Paula knows he must get Nikki to the hospital, which is less than a mile away. So with all the hell exploding around them, he prepares to run the gauntlet. After placing Nikki back in the car, he decides to fight their way out. To circumvent the police car in front of him, he pulls onto Nikki's driveway and drives across his Thunderbird across all three neighbors' front yards, over the curb and back onto the street. He hears a loud pop before feeling the back of his T-Bird start to drag with a blowout. He hears himself shouting something he never thought he'd say. Damn fucking pigs. Paulo force limps the Thunderbird slowly across a couple of main streets to the hospital. A few blocks from his destination, the dead rubber is finally gone, which produces grinding metal sounds from the tire's rim onto the pavement. Yet... He continues to roll. Only a block away, the wheel hub gives way. Without needing to look, Paulo knows he's broken his axle. Not caring, he leaves his prized auto in the middle of the street. He pulls Nicky onto his arms and stumbles onto the pavement, determined to carry her the rest of the way. She opens her eyes. Paulo, Paulo. Don't worry, baby, I got you. Sweat burns as it rolls into his facial scrapes. He is thankful for his ROTC training. The three-mile run every morning is paying off. The emergency ward opens to them as he carries her past the crowded activity at the door. We're finally here, Nikki. We're here. Hospital attendants guide him to the gurney. He walks alongside it as maneuvers around and around other injured people. 
but when the cut on his forehead bleeds into his eyes, dizziness stops him. He sits down just as everything goes black. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ron Perea, and I want to thank you very much for taking in part one and part two of the riots of Albuquerque on our 50th anniversary of these events. Part one, of course, was at the UNM campus, the 1970 Vietnam War riots. One year later, here at Roosevelt Park, the ethnic riots between the Latino community and the police, because right on this spot is where they actually overturned an APD car and threw in a Molotov. And we know how that burned, but we want to thank you. Please mark on this that you enjoyed it. Please like it and subscribe. Let's go and have a burger. Bye-bye.